Okay, this is still section 12.3. These are the example problems for lateral and surface area of cylinders. So to start off with, we're gonna find the lateral area of this beautiful cylinder. Okay, we're gonna use the formula. The formula, once again, is lateral area equals two pi r, that's your circumference, times the height. Okay, because the lateral area is just the sides of this. All right, so then I'm going to take 2 times pi times the radius, which is 14, times the height, which is 18. Now, I'm going to do something when I show these problems. I am going to keep it in terms of pi until the last step. You can do it, you know, the book, once again, I'm not going to fight the book when they're putting things in decimal. I would love to have you leave things in terms of pi. All right, if you take 2 times 14 times 18, you would do all of, the, all of the math up there except for pressing the pi button, you'll get 504, and then you still have pi. So 2 times 14 times 18 is 504, and then you have pi. And I think if you work through more of your problems like this, I otherwise you can do random numbers sometimes, not that this isn't completely random, but I just think it might make your life easier. But once again, you can get get to the answer however you need to. So 1583.4, once again, four decimal places the whole way till the end and then you round, feet squared. It's still area, lateral area is still an area. So we leave it like this. All right, example number two. A set of toy blocks is sold in a cylindrically shaped container. A product label wraps around all sides of the container without any overlaps or gaps. How much paper is used to make the label the appropriate size if the diameter of the container is 12 inches and the height is 18 inches? All right, so the diameter of the container is 12 inches. Oh, sneaky diameter, not the radius. And the height is 18 inches. And they're asking basically the paper on the outside. So if a soup can has that paper on the outside, um, lots of items that you buy in a cylinder have got a paper on the outside. Um, we're going to use lateral area equals 2 pi r h. 2 pi. The radius is not 12. The radius is 6 inches. So we don't want to forget that. So we have 6 for the radius and the height is 18. Once again, I'm going to take 2 times 6 times 18, and that comes out to be 216 pi. So if your answer had to be left in terms of pi, that's what you do, but this book does not do that. So we're going to stick with the book, and your answer should be 678.6 inches squared. All right, and that ends example two. Example number Three, find the surface area of the cylinder. Looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? All right, surface area is 2 pi r h, okay? That is your lateral area plus the two bases that we have to add in. Our bases, remember capital B, stands for the area of the base. It's not a small b, it's a capital B, pi r squared. So now, two. Pi. Radius is 14. The height is 18. Plus 2. Pi radius is 14. And we're going to square that. Here's what I mean when I say working through in terms of pi. I think we're going to take those first. I, I, this is like a separate little piece of the puzzle than this, and I prefer that you guys try uh, all, all of that in the calculator. Oh, some of you guys are pros at it, though. This would actually be 504 pi, and we had that earlier. And then I'm going to add in 14 squared times 2 is 392 pi. Okay, double check just in case I make a mistake. And if I add those two things together, I get 896 pi. And then I can go ahead and press my pi button. Um, 2814.9, and that would be feet squared. All right, example number four. 
this is a little backwards, and these come up on your homework, don't they? Find the radius of the base of a right cylinder if the surface area is 528 pi, Oh, they wrote it in terms of pi square feet, and the height is 10 feet. All right, let's go ahead and draw our picture here. When they say a right cylinder, they're basically saying that this, like the altitude, forms a right angle with the base. And that I can show you better in class two. You can just say the base, if you think about it, stands up on, if you have a, a soup container, you have your base, and then the um, altitude of the can goes straight up from the base and forms a righty, 90 degree angle. Righty? 90? Um, all right, here we go. Surface area is 528 pi is equal to, let's get the form again, 2 pi r h plus 2 of the bases. All right, so we've got 2, I've got a pi. I don't know what the radius is, and my height is 10. Because it tells me in the problem that it's 10 feet. Plus two bases. So I have two, and then a base is the area of the base, so pi, and then radius squared. Whew, that's a lot of stuff right there. I'm going to do just another piece just to make it a little bit easier and be con condensed. Okay, this is actually 100 times 2, so 200 pi. Okay. Now, wait, I am missing something. Oh my, oh you guys, I almost made a mistake. It's not radius. <laughs> okay, so 2 pi r squared. So now I still have a 2 pi r squared because I don't know the radius. I put the height in this place. Oh, you guys were all ready to get the extra credit on that for my mistake. And no, I caught it before you did. All right, moving along. Whoa. This absolutely, I do not want you to take anything times pi because every statement, every little piece up here has pi in it. Pi, pi, pi. Let's get rid of it. As long as you're fair and you divide every piece by pi, you're allowed to do that. So 528 is actually equal to 20r plus 2r squared. Whoa. How are we going to solve for r when I got an r squared and an r? <gasps> It's a quadratic. Oh, no. And some of you are like already cringing in fear. You're like, just the word quadratic. All right, we're going to set. You cannot use a quadratic formula. You cannot factor it until it's set equal to zero. So I have zero equals. I'm going to change the order. Okay, switch that around and then subtract 528. Now it is totally a quadratic equation. I can use a quadratic formula to solve. I can try factoring. The problem with factoring is you don't always know if it's going to work out. I can factor out a 2 and then use a quadratic formula, but I think just for everybody's happiness, we're just going to go with the quadratic formula. Quick reminder, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, and that's the quadratic formula. All right, here we go. A value is 2, my B value is 20, C value is negative 528. So I have negative B, and this is actually is not going to be X that we're solving for. It's actually going to be R, because in our case, we're using R's. So R equals negative 20, negative B, plus or minus, B squared, that'll always be a positive number, minus 4 times A times C divided by 2A, and my other A value is a 2. All right, keep moving on. We got a negative 20, plus or minus, and then 400 um, is going to be this, minus, and then this number is negative 1,224, and then divided by 4. I'm not giving you time to calculate. I'm trying to keep the video short. If you need to calculate, I'm sure you will. Continuing on, negative 20 plus or minus the square root. When you have minus a negative number, oh yes, the horrible math teacher thing to do, I'm going to add. So then I have 1624 under the radical, and that's all going to be divided by 4. 
okay? And it so happens, oh, this is a four. Oh, almost another mistake. I'm trying to copy from my work. That's a four. So this ends up being 4,624. It just so happens that the square root of 4,624 works out nicely to 68. So I have negative 20 plus or minus 68 over 4. All right, now what do you do? You're going to do a plus version and you're going to do the minus version. So I'm going to take negative 20 plus 68 divided by 4. I'm going to take negative 20 minus 68 divided by 4. This gives me 48 over 4, which is 12. That looks very potentially great. Negative 88 divided by 4 is negative 22. Uh-oh, which is a more reasonable solution for a radius, 12 or negative 22? 12. So the radius is 12. Now here's what you could do, and I'm not going to take the time to do it because you're all going to trust me that I didn't make a mistake and you're going to let me know if I did, is if I were to put 12 back in here and say, hey, my radius is 12, and then refigure my surface area, I would get 528 pi. Wonderful. All right, example number five. This is one that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to watch it, or not watch it. You're going to have to work it out and then turn it to me on a separate sheet of paper. Um, uh, the next time I see you in class, when this is going to be due, basically, when you have to watch this video. All right, and this ends section 12.3, surface and lateral areas of cylinders.